Star Wars is a pop culture phenomenon that audiences just can't get enough of. Whether they're celebrating its highs, commiserating its lows, or arguing with strangers on the internet about anything and everything, Star Wars is a constant topic of conversation in the world of entertainment that always grabs people's attention. In fact, some people say that Star Wars looms over pop culture, like a Death Star hovering above Alderaan, always ready to make us explode. With excitement! <laughs> no one says that, but you get the idea. Star Wars is also a massive cash cow that boasts plenty of scope for new stories and imagination. Since the franchise's inception in 1977, media related to it has been popular across a variety of mediums, and it's been influential in every single one of them. There are countless stories out there that explore different timelines and corners of the galaxy, and the franchise has taken advantage of every possible outlet for telling these tales of galactic warfare. Over the years though, countless Star Wars projects have been announced that got us excited, only to never see the light of day. While that is to be expected from a mega franchise that's required to churn out fresh content on a regular basis, it doesn't make their non-existence any less upsetting to fans. With this in mind, let's take a look at some of the most interesting Star Wars movies and TV shows that never came to fruition. Following the release of The Force Awakens, Disney and Lucasfilm began working on Star Wars anthology movies to supplement the main franchise. This saw them approach several exciting filmmakers, one of whom was Josh Trank. At the time, Trank was a rising star due to the success of Chronicle, which led to him being tasked with rebooting Fantastic Four. More on that later. To cut a long introduction short, he was an exciting name, and Disney reportedly wanted him to helm a Boba Fett spin-off film. Unfortunately, things started falling by the wayside for Trank shortly after. He left the project in 2015, but the nature of his departure is still a mystery. According to Trank, he dropped out of Star Wars to focus on a smaller scale film. He had a negative experience while working on the Fantastic Four reboot, and didn't want to jump right into another studio blockbuster right away. Fantastic Four was a critical and commercial flop that was reportedly hampered by studio interference, so you can understand why Trank was hesitant to tackle the demands of the biggest franchise in history. However, there's more to this story. Some rumours have claimed that Trank behaved erratically during the production of Fantastic Four. When word of his alleged behaviour got back to Disney and Lucasfilm, they soured on the director and cut ties with him. After parting ways with Star Wars, Trank went on to make Capone, starring Tom Hardy as the legendary gangster and let's just say he probably won't be fielding offers from Disney after that movie. As for the Boba Fett production that got caught in the crossfires, James Mangold was linked with the project after Trank, but plans to give the bounty hunter his own movie were ultimately scrapped in 2018, presumably due to Boba's similarities with The Mandalorian. Guillermo del Toro loves monsters, so it's unsurprising to learn that he wanted to make a movie about one of the most famous creatures in Star Wars lore. In 2015, the Oscar winning director expressed an interest in making a Jabba the Hutt movie, which would have chronicled the slug-like alien's ascent in the criminal underworld. In an interview with Yahoo, of all people, Del Toro described his idea as a gangster saga, in the same vein as The Godfather. The story would have followed Jabba as he launched a complex coup against an alien mafia, all the way to becoming the dawn of the organisation. Of course, it was too good to be true. In 2017, Del Toro told Collider he'd had some conversations with the folks over at Lucasfilm about making a Star Wars movie, but he appears to have moved on to other projects since then. In a 1980 interview with Preview, George Lucas discussed plans to make some movies that branched off from the main Star Wars saga. One of them included a Wookiee-centric film, which Lucas claimed he wanted to make from the moment he created the Chewbacca character. Unfortunately, this project was one of many throwaway ideas to enter Lucas' imagination, only to disappear just as quickly. He stopped mentioning the movie after the aforementioned interview, and there isn't enough information about it out there to know how close it came to happening. What the story would have entailed is also anyone's guess, but I'm willing to bet that things got a little bit… hairy. <laughs> it's a shame that this one didn't come to fruition though. Wookiees are fascinating creatures with an interesting culture and history. A movie that explored their unique place in the galaxy could have been interesting, but perhaps the idea was too niche and limited for its own good. In the same interview where Lucas discussed the Wookiee movie, he also detailed his plans to make a movie that followed the droids of the Star Wars universe. Lucas didn't share any major plot points about the project, but he did say that the film wouldn't include any human characters. We can also assume that the film would have chronicled the adventures of C-3PO and R2-D2, as they were the centerpiece droids of the franchise at the time. While a robot didn't materialise in the end, some of the Lucas's ideas for it may have inspired Star Wars Droids, a cartoon series from 1985 that followed 3PO and R2-D2 as they encountered a myriad of threats from all around the galaxy.
This one is a unique entry as the show technically exists. Back in 2012, Robot Chicken creators Seth Green and Matthew Senreich completed 39 episodes of this animated comedy series, which would have taken place between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope, but the show was cancelled following Disney's acquisition of Lucasfilm. Basically, Disney didn't want detours interfering with their plans for the franchise. The studio reportedly felt that a comedy series wasn't the best way to reintroduce the galaxy far, far away at the time, so the project was put on the back burner. Star Wars Detours is currently sitting on a shelf somewhere collecting dust, but maybe the show will eventually see the light of day now that Disney has a streaming service. If HBO Max is releasing the Snyder Cut, anything is possible. When Lucas sold Star Wars to Disney, he effectively gave up control of the franchise he created. Under the supervision of Kathleen Turner, J.J. Abrams, Ryan Johnson and a group of executives at the House of Mouse, the decade spanning Skywalker saga came to an end culminating with last year's The Rise of Skywalker, but not in the way Lucas originally imagined. Lucas planned to make a sequel trilogy from the moment he created Star Wars, and while he has kept tight-lipped about his plans for the movies, he has scattered some bits of information about the project throughout the years. In James Cameron's book Story of Science Fiction, Lucas explained that his trilogy would have taken place in a microbiotic world, and featured creatures called the Wills, who are essentially ancient beings that control the universe and feed off the Force. Lucas had the Wills on his mind since the inception of the franchise, and he even wrote a journal that chronicles the events of the saga from their point of view. Despite the creatures' lack of involvement in the films, the Wills were a huge part of Lucas's plans back in the day. As for other story arcs, Lucas' sequels would have followed Luke's children as they saved the galaxy. Elsewhere, Luke would have trained Princess Leia on how to use the Force, before dying in the final movie. Lucas also wanted to give Luke a love interest at one point, who we can only assume was Mara Jade, the character he married in the Expanded Universe. That relationship is considered non-canon by Lucas though. At the end of the day, poor old Luke was always destined to end up alone on Acto, drinking freshly squeezed teat milk before ultimately giving his life for the greater good. According to reports that emerged from the 2013 European brand licensing show, Disney announced that there were Darth Vader TV specials in the works via a brochure. While Disney didn't reveal any significant information about the planned specials, a teaser image was released to suggest they were in development. Save for that one bit of information, however, the project was never mentioned again. A report from Den of Geek speculated that the specials would have bridged the gap between the events of Revenge of the Sith and Star Wars Rebels, the latter of which was released in 2014. Given that Rebels takes place before the timeline in A New Hope, the theory is entirely plausible. When Lucas was developing Star Wars in the 1970s, he hired writer Alan Dean Foster to write a novelisation of the first film. However, he also commissioned Foster to pen a second book, which they planned to use as the blueprint for a cheap movie sequel if A New Hope wasn't successful. The movie would have been called Splinter of the Mind's Eye, and the story would have followed Luke and Leia on a planet called Mimban as they searched for a mysterious artefact that was related to the Force. After A New Hope became super successful, however, The Empire Strikes Back became the first cinematic sequel instead, but Splinter of the Mind's Eye was still published as a book in 1978, marking the beginning of the Star Wars expanded universe. News of this planned series can be traced back to 2005, and for a while it looked set to happen. In fact, earlier this year, some test footage was released by Stargate Studios, who created the special effects for the clip. Lucas described the Star Wars underworld as taking place in the Coruscant criminal underbelly during the time span between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. According to Lucas, the show was also inspired by film noir, suggesting that it would have been more morally complex and low-key compared to the action-adventure elements of other Star Wars titles. Producer Rick McCallum commented on the plot of the series, revealing that it centred around a bounty hunter. He also compared the show to Deadwood and The Godfather, suggesting that it would have been character-driven and gritty. Elsewhere, Lucasfilm's Steve Sansweet said that it would explore the CD side of the Star Wars universe, so we know that it wouldn't have been kid-friendly. 50 episodes were scripted for the purported series, including contributions from sci-fi heavyweights in the form of Battlestar Galactica's Ronald D. Moore and Life on Mars' Matthew Graham. However, the show was postponed in 2010, and Disney hasn't resurrected it. Which is a shame, because it sounds excellent. Before J.J. Abrams inherited the reins to the rise of Skywalker, the concluding entry of the Skywalker saga was supposed to be written and directed by Colin Trevorrow, but he was fired as a result of creative disputes with the studio, with reports claiming that Kathleen Kennedy didn't approve of his vision for the film. Trevorrow's script, which he co-wrote with his Jurassic World cohort Derek Connolly, was called Duel of the Fates, and it's a much different story to the rise of Skywalker. In the film, Coruscant is an oppressed planet ruled over by Chancellor Hux and the First Order. Hux also answers to a council that secretly runs the First Order, and he plots to eliminate Kylo and gain power for himself. 
The First Order also employ some mercenaries called Brute Troopers to carry out their wicked plans. Palpatine is still dead in this one, but he does appear in a holocron, revealing his contingency plan for the universe in the event that he's ever killed. Kylo finds the holocron and meets Tor Valum, who is Palpatine's 7,000 year old mentor. Tor trains Kylo and gets killed for his troubles, as the young protege wants all the power for himself. The Resistance, led by General Leia meanwhile, plans a secret mission to overthrow their tyrannical overlords and bring freedom to the galaxy. Ghost Luke, Finn and Rose have a lot more to do here. Luke spends much of the film hunting Kylo, trying to encourage him to return to Leia and become the good person who still dwells within him somewhere. Luke also trains Rey and helps her hone her Jedi powers. Finn and Rose's mission meanwhile involves a visit to Coruscant to activate a Force Beacon that's located near the First Order's base. The beacon is the key to gathering resistance forces across the galaxy, as its messages can't be blocked or deciphered. Rey and Finn team up for their own separate mission to track down someone who helps Rey become the saviour of the galaxy. During their trip, Rey and Finn get the hots for each other, and share a kiss. As for Rey's parents, it turns out that they were traitors who were murdered by Kylo at the behest of Snoke, which leads to a showdown between the pair on the planet Mortis, featuring appearances from Luke Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda. And that's the end of this video. If you like this list, please give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell. And why not check us out on social media or on our website? Links for those are in the description down below. I've been Kieran for Council of Zoom. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.